In this lesson, we're going to build on the previous knowledge of Python and we're going to look at breakout characters. So before we get underway with the Python knowledge, let's have a recap of what we've learned previously. And what we have is from last lesson, if you can give an example of a float. Also from this topic, can you name four other data types? Then we're going to look at accessibility features, give an example of one. So this is from web design, what is an accessibility feature that can make it easier for some people to view a website. And then you're going to explain what this HTML tag does. So you might want to pause the video while you complete this part of your work. Add it into your ePortfolio and then we'll move on with the Python work. So in Python today we're going to develop our knowledge of the syntax, that's the language of how Python is written. We're going to create some more Python work and test out our Python. We're going to run it, make sure everything works as expected and then we're going to copy our evidence into our ePortfolio. So a recap about variables. The different variables in Python, um, type of variable are called data types. So a variable is something that can change in a computer program. So we store a variable with a name and then we can change that variable at a later time. So variable means it can change. So a recap of data types, we've got integers, which are whole numbers. We've got float or floating point numbers, floats are reals, they are decimal numbers. Strings and characters are text, or it's viewed as text, so it's words. Um, a car registration plate, although it's got numbers in it, can still be text because it's the way that the letters go together. Boolean means true or false, and a list is of multiple variables. Um, we keep lists within these square brackets. We'll do more about lists in year nine. So you need to keep all your work saved. If you're in school, then you can save everything in your Python folder. It's always good to keep everything neat like that. And keep taking screenshots, snips of your work and adding it to your ePortfolio as you go along. Even if you make mistakes, there's an error, it is definitely worth copying that, screen snipping that into your work and explaining why you got the error. By making errors like this, we're going to learn from our mistakes and that's really key to programming. And then when it all works, you can show your results in your ePortfolio by taking a screenshot or a snip of that. So, I'm going to teach you a new term, that's an algorithm. An algorithm, if you can remember this definition, it'd be really helpful. It's in your knowledge organizer. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step series of instructions on how to perform a complex task. So it could be like you've never seen or heard of a cake before. The algorithm to make a cake will be the method, the step-by-step -step series of instructions of how you make that take, make that cake. So it's quite a complex task and you need an algorithm to be able to complete that task. In cakes, we tend to call it a recipe, but a recipe is just following a step-by-step -step series of instructions, which is therefore an algorithm. So moving on for our Python, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bit of software today that behaves a little bit like Python. And it is Python, but instead of having it installed on our computers, we can just use a web-based emulator. And I'm using this one called REPL Replete. So what I've got here is when you go onto their website, there is a video that will explain how you use this in more detail. But all you do is log on and you can click Python and it will save the Python file as a very random name. You can give it your own name in here. So I'm just going to call mine year eight Python two for Python level two, no, lesson two, and create. And that just creates 
a window like this where we can write our Python code in the middle and then our results will end up on this bit on the right hand side. So we're looking at, I'm going to do this above so we can see what's going on still. We've got some code here. We did the print command last week, or I think I've just given one of the answers away. So there's some instructions in red. So the command used in this program is, so what type of command are we using here? And if you was listening carefully, I've already given the answer for that. Um, and how do we know it's that command? What's different about this? And thinking about data types, what data type is used here? Now it's a little clue the fact that we've got speech marks we did last week and that's the last question in here so this is level one I'm going to come back to my Python code in a minute so that's what it's asking you to do here to put that and explain that in your ePortfolio and then what we can start to do is going back to that code I can write that in Python now I'm not going to write all the code I've got a print command got speech marks and I'm just going to put one potato so I've got one potato speech marks and close the bracket I will put a second one in print to potato now just so we can see how this works when I run this command and by clicking here I've got run when I run this command I can see the output from my computer. So that's exactly what we need to produce here. So that was our first bit of code that we can put into our ePortfolio. So that was task four. Task five, this is where we're starting to look about breakout codes and I'll explain what these are in more detail. But if we look at the code here, you can read the code and we've got a print command and you can predict and put into your ePortfolio what you expect to appear on the screen when you run this command. Now your prediction might not work out quite as you intended it to. So what I'm going to do here is again I'm not going to write the whole code but I'll just put some of it in. So I've got print speech marks one potato backslash n two potato backslash n three potato and I'm not going to write the backslash n four and the five I'm just going to close mine there and when I run it what we have now is our print command being split up on different lines I can just make mine a little bit neater there's nothing wrong with what I've done I can put that into my ePortfolio as it is. But now when I run it, it's just a little bit more tidy. So hopefully now you realize that the backslash n, what that does is creates a new line. So this is a breakout command. This is what the idea of today's lesson is, learning some of these elements. So backslash n, what did the backslash n do? Moving on to task six. Now, I'm not going to run through exactly what each one of these does. This is for you to find out. But in your task here that you're going to put into your ePortfolio, you're going to explain what the backslash T does, what the backslash backslash does, and what the backslash speech marks does. So there's an example in the code here below using the backslash 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 um, T. And you can then explain what each part of that code does moving on to task 7 so in task 7 you need to predict each one of these outputs before you run the code so we've got a print hello world I think we can probably work out what that one does we're used to writing print commands with hello world in speech marks now this one here has a single speech mark so what is this one going to do is it going to do anything different that's for you to find out the next one has the plus sign. So I'll tell you now this is concatenation and it's to do with joining words, but you need to find out exactly how that works. And likewise with the comma. Is there a difference between these two? That's what you need to explain in your ePortfolio. Now, 
with an extension task for seven, you can again predict the output. This one is a little bit more complex code. Have a look, see what you think it's going to do. There's a lot going on in this bit of code. Predict it, then you can write the code and show your results. And just make a comment in your ePortfolio if your prediction was correct. And then to finish today's lesson, there's nine questions here. And you can go through the nine questions. You can write the questions in your ePortfolio and add your answer in there as well. So there's quite a bit of Python code to write today. There's quite a bit that I would expect to see in your ePortfolio. Once you've completed your ePortfolio, you need to share that with your teacher.